Welcome back everyone. Welcome back to Let's Play Fallout 4. I wanted to say what we'll be doing. Well, we'll be going to meeting Deacon, I think. But um, I just went past K Kate. Is Kate? Kate? I think she's Kate something. And she wanted to speak to me. So uh, let's see what she has to say. Me. See if I care. <laughs> of course. What's on your mind? Appreciate it. We've been on the road together for a while. And we've taken some hard knocks. But through all that crap, I notice you've always been sticking by me. You know, watching me back and making sure I don't do anything stupid. I think maybe it's time to tell you a little bit about who you're traveling with. There's no reason for us to keep acting like we're strangers. Uh, okay. Appreciate your trust. I appreciate your trust. Well, you're the first to earn it. It all starts with two ways of humanity I suppose you could call me parents. I'm convinced I was a mistake, because I can't remember a single moment that they treated me like their daughter. I was yelled at and beaten. Everything I did was wrong. Nothing but a nuisance in their eyes. The whole time I was telling myself that they had to love me, even if it was just the tiniest bit, because they never kicked me out. Then me 18th birthday arrived, and I found out why they kept me around. They slapped a shock collar around my neck Ooh. and sold me to slavers. They didn't even care enough about me to say goodbye. 18 years of suffering through that shite, and all I was worth to them was a pocket full of caps. Wait a second, why were they waiting for her to turn 18? I mean, it's not like there were laws in the apocalypse, I'm guessing, you know, about, uh, I don't know, uh, age or something? I don't know. Anyway, I'm sorry. My god, I'm so sorry. Thanks. But there is more to the story. It would be easy to blame me charm and personality on me parents, but they didn't make me this way. I did. I was with those slavers for five years. Roughest five of me goddamn life. The things they made me do. The way they use me for their amusement. It sickens me to me stomach even thinking about it. But I bided me time and learned to use their own methods against them. Stealing a few caps out of a sleeping man's pocket is a piece of cake. As long as you don't get greedy. Hmm. I can't even imagine having to go through something like that. You think that's low? Just wait. The story gets much worse. It took every ounce of patience I had. But after five years, I had finally pocketed enough to buy me own way out of there. But huh. instead of heading off to try and repair the shambles of me life, I gave in to me rage and I headed home. You can imagine the look on me parents' faces when I kicked open their door. What you can't imagine is what they looked like after. After I emptied me gun into them. Hmm. That's murder, but... I don't really agree with that. Uh... How could you kill your own parents? How can you call them parents? They were opportunists who were taking advantage of a human being, just to make a few caps. If I'd come out of that bitch of a mother deformed, they would have drowned me in the river and started again. They didn't give a shite about me. So I didn't give a shite about them. End of story. Mm, true. You did what you had to do. Did I? When I close my eyes, all I can see is their faces twisted with fear. And then my mind starts wandering and I start judging myself. And it's ripping me the fuck apart. You think I inject myself with all that shite and drink myself drunk because I'm a tough Irish girl. I do it so I can forget and move on with my miserable life. So there you are. The entire flawed package known as Kate. Stripped bare for your perusal. Hmm. You're judging yourself. Why judge yourself? My parents sold me into slavery. But did they deserve to die for it? Yeah, I took some hard knocks as I was growing up. But they fed me and kept me from glowing with rads. This is the kind of crap that starts me mind wandering and drives me literally to drink. I guess I'm just waiting to hear what you think of me now. <laughs> um, disappointed in you. Well, I'm not exactly proud of her. I mean, I understand it, but things are the same. Don't worry. I haven't lost faith in you. I knew I was taking a chance telling you all this. I'm just glad I haven't disappointed you. A <laughs> flirt. Well, we're not doing that. We're with Piper. We're friends. Hey, it's okay. 
We're friends. Look at me. Now you have me blushing. Well, that settles it, I suppose. Friends it is, then. Hope I make you a good one. Otherwise, I'm gonna look right the fool, aren't I? No. Oh. <laughs> My onboard functions are operating at full capacity. <laughs> Let's see if we can, um... Jesus. Every time we start crafting something, everyone needs to pitch in and say something. Polished metal. What was that? Improved damage and energy resistance. Uh, lightweight painted. You know what? Should I really do anything with this? Ultralight build. How much is it now? 4.8, we can get it down to 3.5. Eh. I don't know. I mean, all of this, all of this stuff is pretty good, I think, as it is. Ultron light, aerodynamic. What? Power attacks drain less AP. <laughs> all right, never mind that. It's our power armor that's you important. All right, let's enter it and try out the uh, <laughs> the jetpack we have. We've added it last time, and bloody hell. Um. So what, we just, to jetpack, press and hold space while in the air. Jetpack use consumes your fusion score charge. Ouch, that might be painful, but let's see it. Alright, let's go. Um, wait, what? Oh, like, oh my, holy crap. That was kind of cool. It's only for a short time. You can't really fly with it, but that was kind of cool still. Alright, so now we have to head over there. So let's go to the Gorski cabin and head south. Gorski cabin. What's that? Oh, it's Kate. Right, we are heading south. South, southeast. Wait a second, let me try this. So, wait, what? Is it not using the... Did I not put the stealth boy thing on it? <laughs> Oh, instead of the stealth boy, I put it on the jetpack, didn't I? Okay. Probably shouldn't have done that. No reason to do so, but there you go. Rat stack, meat, and hide. It's nice to be able to, uh, you know, see enemies from afar with the whole red thing going on. I think that's where we're supposed to go. Who are those guys? I'm thinking that's, that's the railroad guys. Gunner. Wait, what? I mean, they're red to us. Hmm. I guess I should attack them. No, no, no. They are definitely red to us. <laughs> the turret doesn't quite know where we are. Holy crap, what happened to him? He fell down. Did I miss him? He just picked up... Uh, the weapon over there. So where are you? There you go. Not bad. Alright. This is pretty cool. No, oh, uh, no, 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 I just want that. Uh, security baton. Military cap. There's the turret that we destroyed. Molotov cocktail. Not too bad. I mean, what did they think when a guy in power armor was walking up to them? Pretty creepy for them, probably. Now the night, uh, the cool thing is we'll just drop down over here where the quest uh, place is. What is? I'm guessing that is Deacon, and that's a lot of rack stacks. Interesting. Uh, let's go talk to him. I hope the rat stacks are not going to be attacking him. Whoa! <laughs> Oh, that was cool. We just broke through that and bang. I am big and angry. I will destroy you all. I am Arnold. Hey there. Deacon? Is that you? 
Like the disguise? <laughs> it's Wastelander camo. This is my pile of garbage, asshole. Back off. Good, right? Oh. <laughs> You're lucky I didn't do one of my face swaps, too. Face swamps? <laughs> you can change your face. He's a... I put myself under the knife every year or two. Oh. New face, new body, you know, the full makeover. It keeps our enemies guessing. Hmm. That, not much of a disguise. A disguise is more than a wig and some lice ridden clothes. The hell's going on? You'd be surprised on? how far I've gotten with the right attitude and a clipboard. But about the job. The railroad's only recently been using the old North Church. Our old base was underneath the Slocum's Joe. We had a pretty sweet setup until the Institute found us. Slocum's Joe? Your base was under a donut shop? It's a lot better than it sounds. Well, it was, until it was blown to hell. What happened? Our HQ was strong, defensible. Heck, we thought it was secure. Inside a minute, the Institute troopers breached the doors and turned it into a shooting gallery. The survivors didn't have time to grab anything. So we're getting something important we had to leave behind. Uh, what is it? What exactly are we looking for? I'll tell you when we get inside. I know that's a bum deal, but strategic ignorance has saved our organization more times than I can count. We got a tourist nearby. He or she has information on the base. So let's pump him for information before we dive in. Okay. For now, I'll take point. All right. So we're looking for rail signs. Symbols we use to send messages to each other. If you like that, we got signs and counter signs, dead drops, even a secret handshake. All right, maybe the handshake never got on. <laughs> anyway, the tourist should have a trail left for us. Here we go. Rail sign. The arrow in the center indicates a direction. So our tourist is up ahead. Let's keep going. Man, look at this power armor. <laughs> That is so cool. And if I put the right weapon on, it also looks even cooler. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> so come on, Deacon. Got let's go. Rail sign. Right there. Yep, it's still that way. A lot of ghouls here. They do have some pretty good stuff. Yeah, there's a ghoul. Hello. Thank you. I like ghouls. Very cool enemies. There's another sign. Let's go. Probably should have uh, checked the bus. Oh. There's nothing in here. Oh, I see. These guys were taking the bus. And I rudely interrupted them. That's a prisoner. Wait, what? Raider Scammer. Oh, interesting. It's pretty amazing that can uh Whoa, whoa. You hear that? Yeah, I just shot someone. <laughs> From all the way up here. <laughs> oh, that was cool. Let's go. That is a cool place. That's probably yeah, Ricky Dalton. That is a cool place, that Corvega factory from afar and at night. I really love the fact that we can do this now. This was always my wish to have a post-apocalyptic, you know, huge city like this, where you can just go to a... Us in the center? That means there's an ally nearby, our tourist. You take point on the conversation. Look, no matter what he says, you just say, mine is in the shop. Trust me. Okay. Yeah, where you can go to a high place like this and uh, just look at the entire place from there. It's so awesome. Um, and of course... Excuse me. I, I probably, after playing this, I'll probably have to find a mod that removes all NPCs and just adds ghouls everywhere. And like, you know... 
a zombie apocalypse type of thing where you have to search for food. I know, I'm boring, but there you go. Hey, man. <clears throat> oh, thank God. You have a Geiger counter? You have a goddamn Geiger counter? <laughs> Did you see that thing over there? I think it's a big muton. Um, uh, muton? <laughs> this is not XCOM. <laughs> Super mutant. Um. Why do you need a Geiger counter? Is this place irradiated? Wait, what? Whoa, whoa, easy there. <laughs> he meant to say, mine is in the shop. That's better. My heart almost burst out of my chest. Who the hell is he? HQ said they were sending one agent, not two. Sorry, I'm new. He's just showing me the ropes. All right. The wall is my witness. I thought I was dead. It's about goddamn time you headquarters bastards got here. Hmm. Status update. Tell me what's going on. I signed on for some light recon. But that little slocum's Joe of yours is crawling with goddamn chrome dome synth sons of bitches! The front's fortified to hell and back. They place mines all over the goddamn place. Hmm. They have a minefield? Yeah, the mother of all minefields. I couldn't draw you a map if I tried. I appreciate all you've done. I hope it helps. I really do. As soon as it's safe, I'm getting the hell out of here. So if you need anything else, Better ask soon. Yeah, crap. I forgot to ask him that hey, other thing. Ricky. You need something else? Oh, make a distraction. Sniper fire. Sniper fire could be cool. We're assaulting the base. Once we strike, use your rifle to pick off anyone you can see. A lot of lives are depending on us. You silver tongue son of a bitch. <laughs> All right, I'll take a couple shots. But if I see any of them coming for me, I'm running for the hills. We're done. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. <clears throat> well, isn't Ricky just a ray of sunshine? You think he's telling the truth? Why wouldn't he? Speaking of truth, why did you lie to Ricky? My job in the railroad is intel. That job's easier if no one knows who I am. So, I lied. I do that. So you handled the talky talk and I got to watch from the sidelines. Go team us. Hmm. Why would Ricky lie? People always got reasons to lie. The Institute could have turned him. Or, more likely, he's just seriously pissed off at us. Take your pick. Uh, he's being honest, probably. I don't know why he wouldn't be. He doesn't strike me as the dishonest type. Yeah, that's my read, too. First rule in this business is never go against your gut. So, if we take him at his word... The front door has mines, synths, and probably other fun and exciting prizes. So, we're going in through the escape tunnel. Okay. The donut shop has an escape tunnel? What? Doesn't everyone have an escape tunnel? Seriously, though? Thank God for that tunnel. If it weren't for that, there wouldn't be any railroad left. Alright. Frontal assault. Let's move out. You lead us there, pal. I got you covered. Alright, so where is this escape tunnel? So that... What? Oh wait, the donut... No wait, it's actually showing, is there something there? Where is the donut shop? What? Is that the donut shop? No. I'm guessing the donut shop is somewhere over here. But the... Bloody hell. But the escape tunnel is back there. Look at this thing. I'm tempted to... Oh, no, ooh, ooh. Did I hit him? No, I don't think you're gonna actually hit him from that far. What is that? Is that a ghoul? There's a lot of stuff in there. Oh, it, uh, it's synths. That is the donut shop, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of synths there. So, there we go, he's not lying. For one. Oh, you know what we're gonna do here? You know what we're gonna do? <laughs> yeah. I'm out of... No, no, no. <laughs> that was so cool. I like that. Let's go for the escape tunnel. That was so cool. Absolutely cool. That was so cool. Anything around here? Oh. There's the escape tunnel. 
It's more like a sewage pipe. And what is that? Oh, it's those things we can pick up. There's the escape tunnel. Wow. Okay, I take back the sewage part. It is the sewer. And the back entrance is safer, but be ready for Gen 1s and 2s. So it's time you learn why we're here. We're retrieving a prototype developed by our good Dr. Carrington. Okay. What can you tell me about the Gen 1s and 2s? The synths didn't start off as nigh-perfect copies of human beings. The Institute had to work up to that level of hubris. Gen 1s and 2s were stepping stones along the way. The railroad's not fully united on how we feel about them. Hmm. What's there to be divided about? Everyone wants to liberate the Gen 3s, the human-looking synths. Some of the synths in the railroad, like Glory, think we should help earlier models too. But Gen 1s are basically the same as, well, a Protectron. So the line gets muddy. Do we defend AI rights? Terminals? Hell, turrets? <laughs> Anytime it gets brought up, <sighs> fireworks. All the old arguments flare up. The upshot is Glory and some others won't run missions like this. Hmm. Who's Dr. Carrington? All goes well. You'll meet him soon enough. Okay. Let's go. Ready to go. First step is to override the security lockdown. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching, and we're going to be uh, continue next time. Bye bye.